a year ago, I lent a large sum of money, $10,000, to my mother-in-law. I was supposed to get it back right away, but she kept finding excuses and didn't return it. Then one day, I received a message from her saying, I'll give you back the $10,000, so come and get it. Although the repayment deadline had long passed, I thought it would be enough if she just returned it. With that in mind, I went to meet her, completely unaware of what awaited me. My name is Lillian, and I'm 29 years old. After getting married, I quit my job and now work part-time at a cafe. I've been married to my husband, Wesley, for three years. We don't have any children yet, and since our marital home and my husband's parents' house are close by, I often visit my in-laws. Therefore, I have regular opportunities to see them. My father-in-law works for a top-tier company, and my mother-in-law is a homemaker. It was about a year after getting married when my mother-in-law's behavior started to change for the worse. The trigger was something trivial. One day, while I was cleaning at home, the intercom rang. When I opened the door, there stood my mother-in-law. Mother-in-law, what's the matter? I asked, surprised. Lillian, I'm sorry for the sudden visit. I know it's an inconvenience, she replied, looking anxious. No, it's all right. But what's the matter? I urged, sensing something was wrong. Actually, I have something I'd like to discuss with you, she said, her face full of worry. I invited her in and decided to hear her out. You see... I know it's sudden, but I need to borrow some money from you, she said hesitantly. Money? I repeated, confused. With my father-in-law working for a top-tier company, there shouldn't be any income issues. Mother-in-law, excuse me for asking, but what do you need the money for? I asked, concerned. It's for various things, like painting the walls in the house. We're not really financially stable right now, she explained. I see, but don't you receive a monthly allowance from Dad? I asked, trying to make sense of the situation. Yes, but I misunderstood something and ended up spending it on something else, she admitted, her voice full of regret. As a result, I can't afford to repaint the walls as planned this month. If things continue like this, your father will be angry with me, she complained. Mother, please calm down. How much do you need? I asked, wanting to help but unsure of how much she was asking for. For now, I think it's around $3,000, she said, almost apologetically. $3,000? I repeated, taken aback. Please, Lillian, I have no one else to turn to. I promise I'll pay you back $1,000 each month. Could you lend it to me? She pleaded, her voice shaking. To be honest, $3,000 wasn't a small amount, and I didn't have the financial flexibility to lend it. But seeing my mother-in-law genuinely struggling in front of me, I couldn't just ignore the situation. All right, I agreed reluctantly. Really? She said, her eyes lighting up. Yes. In return, please make sure to stick to the monthly $1,000 repayment, okay? I asked her to. Of course. Thank you, Lillian, she exclaimed, grabbing my hands in gratitude. As she was leaving, my mother-in-law made a peculiar request to me. You know, Lillian, about what happened today, please don't mention it to your father-in-law. I understand. I'll keep it a secret, I assured her. Thank you. And please don't tell Wesley either, she added quickly. Huh? Not even Wesley? I asked, surprised. If Wesley accidentally mentions it to his father, it'll be troublesome, right? That's why I want it to be our secret, just between you and me, she explained. Wesley isn't the type to blurt out things, so I think it'll be fine, I replied, trying to reassure her. Still... Maybe she felt responsible for the situation. In that case, it might be better to keep quiet, as she requested. Time passed without me thinking too much about it, but even after two months, then three, there was no sign of the $1,000 being paid back. Six months later, since there was still no sign of repayment, I decided to visit my in-laws directly. When I rang the doorbell, my mother-in-law's eyes widened in surprise upon seeing me, but she quickly returned to her usual smile and welcomed me inside. Welcome, Lillian. Come on in, she said, leading me to the living room. Thank you for having me, I replied, sitting down across from her. Just as I was about to speak, she quickly asked, Is it about the money? Yes, mother. You said you'd repay $1,000 each month, right? I reminded her. Yes, I remember, she replied, her voice growing tense. 
I hate to bring this up, but it's been over six months now. I continued. But before I could finish, my mother-in-law covered her face with both hands and started to cry. Oh, I'm so sorry. I know it's bad, but things have been really difficult for me too, she sobbed. I understand it's difficult, but remember, I didn't just give you that $3,000, I said gently, trying not to press too hard. I know, I'll pay you properly. Please just wait a little longer, she begged through her tears. Seeing her crying like that, I couldn't press any further. That day, I left without getting the money back. Since I promised my mother-in-law I'd keep it a secret, I couldn't tell my husband either. Ultimately, the $3,000 was repaid by my mother-in-law after about a year had passed. Lillian, I'm sorry for the delay. Thank you, she said when she finally returned the money. While I felt frustrated, I understood that my mother-in-law must have been in a difficult situation as well. I told myself this and decided to let the matter rest. Six months later, my mother-in-law approached me again, asking for money. This time it was $10,000. $10,000? You must be joking. I couldn't help but exclaim. I wouldn't joke about something like this. Please, Lillian, I can only rely on you, she pleaded. Even if you say that, $10,000 is... I didn't finish speaking before she added. I understand that it's shocking, but I can't tell anyone else. I have no one else to turn to. That's why I need your help. Her voice shaking. Facing my crying mother-in-law, I didn't know what to do, but there was no way I could lend such a large sum considering the previous delayed repayment. Why do you need $10,000? I can't lend you the money unless you at least tell me the reason, I said firmly. After a moment of silence, my mother-in-law began to speak slowly. Actually, I helped a friend. A certain friend fell seriously ill. They live alone and have no one to rely on, but they needed money for medical treatment, so they turned to me. So you lent them $10,000 for medical expenses? I asked. She hesitated before replying. Yes, but the $10,000 is my husband's money. I have to return it to the account as soon as possible. I frowned. If that's the case, why don't you talk to your husband about it? It's not like you did anything wrong. Her reaction startled me. She slammed the table and stared at me intensely. That won't work. I have to return it right away. My husband is very strict about money. Even if it's not something bad, imagine what he would say if this came to light, she said, her voice rising with tension. Quickly regaining her composure, she continued, Please, Lillian, I promise this will be the last time. I won't trouble you anymore. I'll return the money immediately, so please, just this once. Knowing my father-in-law's strict nature when it came to finances, and seeing that my mother-in-law had acted out of kindness, I couldn't bring myself to dismiss her plea. Reluctantly, I agreed to lend her the money. A year passed, and the $10,000 still hadn't been returned. On top of that, I had recently discovered I was pregnant, and I knew there would be many expenses once the baby arrived. I wanted the money back, but being in the early stages of pregnancy, I couldn't go to her house. Instead, I regularly kept in touch with her, asking about repayment. At first, she would respond with, just wait a little longer. But lately, there had been no communication at all. I wondered if she was avoiding me intentionally. Either way, I knew things couldn't continue like this. Finally, I decided to talk to my husband. Wesley, can I talk to you for a moment? I began hesitantly. I've been keeping this to myself, but... I lent money to your mother. His brow furrowed. To my mom? How much? He asked, confused. Ten thousand, I answered softly. What? Are you kidding me? Why such a large sum? Did she force you to lend it? He asked, his voice rising with disbelief. No, it's not like that. She had her reasons and I agreed to lend it. But it's been a year and she hasn't paid it back, I explained. Are you serious? She borrowed it a year ago? Wesley sighed deeply and grabbed his phone, dialing his mother. I could faintly hear her tearful voice over the phone, which made me feel slightly guilty. However, Wesley managed to persuade her and set a clear plan for repayment. The situation was temporarily settled, but the next day I received a rare phone call from my mother-in-law. Lillian, I asked you not to tell Wesley, she said, her tone accusatory. I'm sorry, but it's been a year since I lent you the money, I retorted. 
Do you think I have no intention of paying you back? I've been preparing for payment, she snapped. I didn't mean to imply that, but I'm expecting a child, and there will be financial needs in the future. I would appreciate it if you could repay me as soon as possible, I replied, trying to stay calm. I understand that, but that doesn't mean you should go and tell Wesley, she shouted. I apologized again, but she wasn't interested. I'll pay you back, so don't contact me until then, and don't say anything unnecessary to Wesley, okay? With those sharp words, she abruptly ended the call. A few days later, after a regular checkup for my baby at the hospital, I was on my way home when I unexpectedly saw my mother-in-law entering a casino. From the outside, I could see her gambling with a significant amount of money. Anger and confusion overwhelmed me. What was going on? She hadn't returned the money, and yet here she was, gambling. Could she have spent the borrowed money on this? Troubled by these thoughts, I decided to hire a detective to investigate her background. As expected, it was revealed that she had accumulated debt due to her gambling habit. An intense rage consumed me. She had lied to me, borrowed money, and now was indulging in a casino? There was no doubt I would never forgive her. I was determined to make sure she repaid every cent. I had my husband call her again regarding this matter, and a few days later, she sent me a text, probably realizing the seriousness of the situation. I have the full amount I borrowed ready, so come and get it. To borrow money from someone and say such things sounded suspicious, but my primary focus was on getting the $10,000 back. I was determined to make her apologize. With that mindset, I headed to my in-law's house. As soon as I arrived, my mother-in-law looked at me with a dissatisfied expression. My father-in-law was unexpectedly present in the living room, his expression tense. My mother-in-law took out an envelope and said, Lillian, here you go. Let me check it, please, I replied. I opened the envelope, took out the contents, and slowly examined each bill, making sure that the $10,000 was there. Suddenly, my father-in-law glared at me with a stern expression. Hey, even though we helped you, what is that attitude? He uttered. Helped me? By whom? I asked, confused. Can you at least say thank you? How rude, he snapped. Beside him, my mother-in-law turned pale and looked flustered. I immediately understood the situation. She had portrayed me as the villain and managed to obtain this $10,000 from my father-in-law. Trying to cover her wrongdoing, she had concocted a story about me being in financial trouble. My mother-in-law quickly interjected, Please, let's calm down. Lillian didn't have any evil intentions. What are you saying? My father-in-law shot back, irritated. Asking for $10,000 because you're having a baby and have no money? That's incredibly unreasonable. But you know, my mother-in-law tried to explain. They say giving birth can be expensive these days. That's something a couple should figure out on their own, he exclaimed, his frustration growing. Besides, why isn't Wesley here, that idiotic son of mine? As his anger shifted to me, I realized I couldn't bear it any longer. It was time to reveal the truth. With all due respect, Father, I didn't come here to borrow money. I lent $10,000 to your wife. Today I came to collect it, I honestly confessed. Huh? What are you talking about? He asked, taken aback. I said it just now. I came to collect the $10,000 I lent to your wife, I repeated calmly. What do you mean? His eyes widened, clearly confused. Meanwhile, my mother-in-law began sweating nervously, desperately trying to stop me from saying more. Ideally, I would have received the money back, and that would have been the end of it. But this time, things were different. My mother-in-law had been using my money to fund her gambling habit, and she had borrowed even more money to cover her debts. Father, I said, I will be straightforward. Your wife owed me $13,000. I received $3,000 back, but today I've come to collect the remaining $10,000. I didn't come here seeking help, I explained in detail. What's going on? He demanded, turning to his wife. Didn't you say that Lillian and Wesley were struggling with child expenses? My mother-in-law trembled, unable to meet his gaze. It seems like your wife has a debt at the casino, I uttered, deciding to answer on behalf of my mother-in-law. What? The casino? He repeated in disbelief. 
She pretended she genuinely needed money and borrowed it from me, but it turns out she used it for gambling. I don't know if my $10,000 went to the casino or if she used it to pay off debts she incurred from gambling, I added. Is this true? My father-in-law asked, his voice hardening as he turned to his wife. If it is, you should apologize to Lillian immediately. Interrupting him, I said, regardless, I can't forgive her, I'm sorry. But after today, I will sever ties with your wife. The word sever ties seemed to shock my mother-in-law. She leaned forward, pleading tearfully. Wait, Lillian, it's not what you think. There's a reason for this. What's different? I asked coldly. The fact remains that you were in debt and used my money for gambling, right? On top of that, you made me out to be the villain, forcing father-in-law to come up with the money. I have no intention of continuing as family with someone like you, I concluded. That's why... There's a reason for this, she continued almost desperately. Shut up, I snapped, losing patience. You have no sense of propriety. No matter how much you suffer, I won't help you. In fact, I'll never see you again. Go ahead and suffer with your debt or whatever. You damn gambling addict. I put the envelope with the $10,000 into my bag and left the house, swearing to myself I would never return. That night, my mother-in-law came to my house to apologize. She sobbed and knelt before me. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry, totally sorry, she cried. Apologies are unnecessary. Neither my husband nor I have any intention of forgiving you, I replied coldly. Please don't say that, she begged. If you and Wesley don't forgive me, your father-in-law won't either. I'm sorry, but could you leave right now? You're causing trouble, I insisted. Mom, it's too late, my husband added. I can't protect you anymore. Go home. He forcefully escorted her out. In the end, it seems my father-in-law announced he would divorce her. However, the divorce won't happen immediately. It will be finalized once she repays the $10,000 he gave me. Fearing the impending divorce, my mother-in-law started working from morning till night, something she had never done before as a homemaker. Now she had to earn her own living, a harsh reality for her. Since then, my husband and I haven't seen my mother-in-law. We deleted her contact information and moved closer to my husband's workplace. We will never see her again, but there's no bitterness because a new life was born into our family. Now the three of us live happily together with our child. If this child gets married in the future, I will make sure not to become a mother-in-law like mine. With that vow in my heart, I held my child tightly.